Good day. Welcome to another edition of Inside Putnam Valley Schools. Eric Grosser, host, along with Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Fran Wills. And Fran, it's getting close. It, it is. And this is our final Inside Putnam Valley. For the school year. For the school year. And um, it's, it's really bittersweet. Uh, I love being in Putnam Valley. I uh, really have such a wonderful connection, I feel, with the community. And um, I also look forward to seeing how our new superintendent, Dr. Luft, progresses. Uh, I know he's going to be a real asset to this community and to the schools. He has um, a long-term tie that uh, I believe will, will be a very good, will have some very good benefits for our school district. Fran and I are going to reminisce in just a few minutes. So before we do that, though, I want to tell you about some incredible, incredible student recognitions since we last talked to you. First, though, you want to thank the residents of the Putnam Valley Schools for that successful Absol budget vote. Absolutely. We, we are always so grateful for the affirmation from the community. Without that, we cannot exist as we are now with the initiatives that we have, that we have brought you know, to the community, uh, the science research program or the IB program that we're starting. Um, these programs rely on support from the community. And they're for our students. They're for the future of our students. Thank you, one and all. Student recognitions. Where do you want to start, boss? Oh, it's it's absolutely incredible this year. Uh, last night, I was at the BOCES Career in Tech graduation, and uh, we have we have uh, 22 students graduating this year. There are 450 students at the Career in Tech from 18 districts. And last night, we were so proud that one of our students, Josh, Josh Uchitel, was the salutatorian mm. for the Tech Center. And uh, we're very proud uh, of that for our school district. This is a wonderful program, you know, that students are able to participate in. It, you know, digital film, construction, electricity, uh, you know, electrician, uh, health programs. There are just uh, numerous opportunities. And, you know, that's what I'm all about, really, and my feeling about being a superintendent. How do I bring more opportunity to our students for their success? We have 10 students going to Genius Olympiad from our science research program next week. Last year we had two. Uh, and they're going up to Oswego, mm -hmm. and they're going to compete with over 1,000 students from all over the world at the Genius Olympiad. And, you know, this is something that we are doing so that our students see the possibilities in the future for them. Fran talked about BOCES. Well, BOCES also inducted students into the National Technical Honor Society. There were a total of 63, 26 from Putnam County, and several from Putnam Valley. Yes. Nayare Jokania, jo uh, Jackie Vaccaro, uh, Jacqueline Padotti, and Kyle Bioski. And I, just a word about Jacqueline Padotti, uh, tie-in here. She was the author of the winning one-act play. That's right, we did her. Um, we chatted with her last time. Yes, time. and she also, so she uh, was taking the digital film course, so she's involved in the, the arts. Uh, what's exciting is that now, uh, due to the hard work of Dan Mahoney, who, is, who does our tech work here, uh, vi video tech work, the one-act plays are posted on YouTube mm. and you can get there through our website through the high school link and you can see and I hope the community does see the great talent of our students as as writers as thinkers when Dr. Luft uh, talks about student agency uh, what we're working on is giving students voices and this was one opportunity for students this year uh, for a voice on the legislative level, both locally and statewide, several students were also recognized. At Putnam County Legislature, congratulated some children from Putnam Valley, uh, declaring Youth Bureau High School Recognition Day. And the youngsters from Putnam Valley yeah, were... Gianna San Lucas and Annabelle uh, Vargas. Also, the state legislature uh, honored the Kutra family and Zach Kutra in particular for the rescue on Lake... Oscalana. So, you know, our students reach out into the community and have a place in the community. In fact, just yesterday, uh, we had a Coalitions That Care meeting uh, at our high school, and uh, we had a focus group of students at the high school that uh, were interviewed by Coalition That Care representatives. And they talked about the survey 
that all ninth graders, all, I'm sorry, all eight through 12 students take uh, in our schools every other year. And this is uh, across the region. And the survey is about the use of drugs and alcohol primarily. It's also about well-being. And these were ninth graders primarily who were interviewed. And they said something that was, I think, important for all of us to recognize. One of the things they said was, yes, there is a problem that youngsters face in terms of uh, vaping, in terms of marijuana use. Uh, this is a serious problem nationally. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing so many, too many, young people who are dying of overdoses. It's becoming so serious. And this is, we're talking about kids uh, who are primarily actually out of high school, going into college, and a, a little older than that. I was going to say, most of them are early to mid-20s now. Yes, These are not, yes. Kids. These are kids. So, but they start. They yeah. start. The gateway is, is early. And one of the things the students said really hit home, and that was, they said, you know, the administrators in our schools, this is our students saying this, the administrators in our schools really care. They're trying their hardest. They're doing their best. They're doing everything they can. They said, it's really something that we feel is with our parents, that we need better communication with our parents, that we're hoping, this is from our students, mm -hmm. that parents are clearer on education about drugs and alcohol early on. And, you know, we are, as parents, I'm a parent and a grandparent, I've seen things like this in my own family, so I'm mm -hmm. talking from personal as well as professional experience. It is difficult to talk about certain topics in the home. We find it uncomfortable. And yet, if we don't take a stand on this and act aggressively to ensure that our children are safe from the forces that are there right now in terms of uh, drugs, alcohol, the, uh, the marijuana, and the vaping, because it's very different from the early days. Yes. THC, at a very, very high level, and we have a great, serious, and tragic concern right now that we need to get behind. We need to help our students uh, early on to understand what the parameters are, what the serious effects can be. Joe DeMarzo, who is the Deputy Commissioner of uh, Mental Health and the Youth Bureau Director, his famous line is, parents, be parents, don't be a friend. And a lot of time, parents want to be friends to their kids. You have to be a parent. Well, it's difficult. Tough it's, love. It's tough. It's very difficult, and we need help with it. I mm -hmm. think parents, we have to try more, and we've, we've had meetings with parents. We've had pres presenters. How do we help parents f feel comfortable, strong, able to say no, to take what comes, which is often anger? And I've dealt with this in my own home, so I understand it completely. Yeah. But... It's worth it. It's worth the difficulty of confrontation. We are so averse to conflict, and yet in these situations, it's basically saving a life. Okay. A number of uh, other recognitions go out outside of the field of academia. We have musicians and we have athletes. Yes, we have uh, a Metro Theater Award for Alex Pilmanis, who uh, is a very fine musician and um, in his accompanying for in his accompaniment of chorus line in the in the pit, he played the keyboard so brilliantly that he received the Metro Award. All of the high schools in the area, Alex Pelmanis as musician was recognized. And in the it, athletics, yeah. we have Anaya Gavan, whose feat on the track at the state level was astounding. She. Uh, uh, Naya Gavon was third overall in Division Two in the 100-meter dash, running a blistering 12.47 seconds. That placed her barely a half second behind the winner. A half second. A half second. Who was uh, of tapestry who crossed the tape first. But we see a freshman, Naya, doing so well that we have tremendous, tremendous hopes for the future for, uh, for Naya. She is a very hard worker. She is absolutely, she perseveres and she's very serious about her work. She was also fifth overall in the 200 meter dash and it was a very tight race as well. So 
we have wonderful things happening. Again, I go back to my goal as a superintendent. How do we create as many opportunities as possible for our students for their future? Let's take a break and say hi to uh, Superintendent-elect. We'll be superintendent in just a couple of days. Jeremy left stop by to say hello. We'll be right back. Well, Superintendent-elect, almost superintendent, effective July 1, Jeremy Luft is with us today. And Jeremy, you must be excited. It's getting closer and closer to that first day of July. Yes, it's very exciting. We've been uh, hard at work this spring. Uh, Dr. Wills has been keeping me very busy and- Cracking uh, the whip, huh? <laughs> She, she has a tremendous amount of experience and knowledge, and um, she's done an excellent job of uh, bestowing some of that knowledge on me. So I'm feeling uh, prepared. What are you looking forward to for the new school year? Well, I think the most exciting thing is how well everything's going in our buildings and that we have tremendous initiatives underway. And I think first and foremost, my goal is to continue um, what's already been established here. And we have a lot of amazing programs that are just getting off the ground. And I think my first priority is to really um, make sure those continue to grow. You know, we talked about this when you were first appointed, but it must make you feel so incredibly great. Went to the Putnam Valley schools, mm -hmm. grew up in Putnam Valley, and I had a superintendent of schools. Wow. Yeah, it's a little surreal. Um, um, my mom still lives in town, and I was just speaking with my brothers who all graduated or went through Putnam Valley schools, uh, the youngest of which actually graduated from the high school. The first three of us all went to Panis mm -hmm. before the high school was built. But the schools in Putnam Valley have always been really important to our family um, and really serve as the hub of the community. And being from a family that played sports and involved in cultural arts, that um, our family is really um, entwined with the school district and has been for many years. You know, you talk about the hub of the community. As you know out there, Putnam Valley does not have a quote-unquote Main Street area. Mm -hmm. So the schools, besides educating the children of Putnam Valley, actually serve as the nucleus of the whole community. Yeah, I mean, our buildings are really used seven days a week, um, all year round. And whether it be school events, community events, or even private entities uh, renting out our spaces, uh, it's certainly the hub of the community, and we're very excited to have an upcoming facilities project that will um, improve our buildings even further. And the creation of a health and wellness center we anticipate will be used seven days a week by both school, community, and private organizations. How's that coming along? Uh, it's very exciting. We're in construction drawings. We're beginning construction drawings now, so we meet regularly with our architects and construction managers. We have an advisory committee of community members as well as district employees, and then we have focus groups for sort of special interests. Recently, we had a cultural arts one talking about upgrades to the elementary school and middle school stage, lighting and sound, and all of those um, important pieces to support our cultural arts program. So we're moving along, and um, we hope to break ground uh, early next spring. And of course, this couldn't have been done without the voters of Putnam Valley. Yeah, it's very much appreciated. What are your plans for the summer? Um, well, I, again, I think we have, uh, we have a lot of professional development happening over the summer. We have teachers coming in to revise their curriculum. One of the emphasis, one of my emphasis for next year is really teacher facilitated workshops mm. for training. So I think we have our most talented professional developers or our own staff members. And we have teachers that are coming in to facilitate trainings for their colleagues. We've done a ton of work around innovative learning spaces and we have teachers coming in over the summer to continue that work. And we just want to continue to build uh, student agency and empowering our students and wellness. I think that's really something that we're seeing a rise in is the need to support students both socially, emotionally, and physically. And I think there's a lot of work going on in the district uh, to put things in place to support students. Well, again, we wish you a good uh, beginning of the new school year. Come July 1st, going to be here before you know it. True. And Jeremy and I will be back midsummer, towards the end of summer, give you an update. For the first show, for the 2019-2020 school year, where did time go to? I don't know, but it will, it'll be here before we know it. Jeremy, have a good summer. Me too. Appreciate Jeremy loved superintendent before you know it in the Putnam Valley School District. <laughs> Fran and I will be right back. Thank you. Well, she's a newcomer, but she's no stranger. We're talking about Jeanette Mistretta, who's the new director of curriculum and instruction on the 1st of July. Welcome. Thank you. How Thank does you. it feel? It must make you feel great. 
working your way up the ladder, as they say. Absolutely. And I always tell people, I started here in this district on my very first day as a substitute teacher. Did you really? I did, yes. And in 2005, and worked my way from there to a leave replacement and just carried my way through nine years of teaching, first and third grade, and then was very lucky to have the opportunity to serve as the elementary um, school assistant principal, which has been an amazing experience. And now here at the district level to be appointed as the director of curriculum and instruction is truly an honor for me. What does that role entail? Well, I think it entails working very closely with our school district leaders, with our principals and our assistant principals, um, with our district uh, leaders and our board of education. Um, but for me, I really hope it's an opportunity for me to work closely with teachers and also to spend time with students, observing students, um, seeing what students are doing, asking them questions, and spending time in the buildings. So you're going to be out and about. I really intend to, yes. Not yes. going to sit here. She said, no, yes. she's going to be out there visiting. <laughs> There's a lot of work to be done behind the scenes, but I certainly hope to be out and about. I certainly hope to be able to go to classrooms and model some lessons and facilitate groups that will help support teachers. Well, we wish you the very, very best. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to it. Jeanette Mistretta. Jeanette brings a real wealth of knowledge, and again, the same thing, people working in Putnam Valley, not necessarily newcomers, they yep. work their way up the ranks, like Jeremy, like Jeanette, it's just wonderful. It is, and uh, you know, Jeanette had experience as a teacher, quite a bit of experience in New York City, um, and so she brings another dimension. Same thing is true with Jeremy. While he's from Putnam Valley, mm -hmm. he had experience in a number of school districts. Mm -hmm. He was in Ossining, he was in Hastings, he had been in North Rockland teaching, and then also leading in Ossining, he was tech director, uh, and he was a curriculum director in Hastings. So, yes, they have a lot of experience here, but they're bringing with them a, a bigger vision, and that's very important. It's important to be able to bring to the table this rich experience. It helps to assess where we are and it helps to be able to create for the future. You have a magnificent painting on your yeah, side. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that a couple of scholarship awards were given this week that were really very meaningful. Hope for Youth, for example, uh, which is a wonderful organization that helps fund our, um, our homework booster lab at the middle school and plays a very important role in our schools uh, throughout the area uh, working for children. Also, you've seen the calendars that they yes. use as part of their fundraiser from Jim, Jim Witz. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's been behind that, and he's behind a Hope for Youth in, um, in our communities. Well, they have a scholarship, and we're very proud that Gavin Mitchell, uh, our student, uh, our senior, was awarded this scholarship this year. Gavin is a remarkable young man, not only as a musician, but as a leader, for example, in our a cappella choir, and a leader in the school in general, always willing to be uh, active and to help our school's future and who we are. So this uh, year in particular, he worked with the principal to bring a really uh, wonderful Appalachian uh, group to a music group to our students, and it's a, uh, a a choral a choral group. A record they they have records, and they came and they performed it live, and even had Gavin and um, one of our other students also working Chiara, um, who also is a senior, working um, with them, singing with them, and uh, this was a great experience for our high school students and uh, for everyone involved. Gavin is very involved in our schools, in our high school, and he was the award winner of their scholarship. We also had a scholarship awarded to Caitlin Cohn by the Gateway Chamber of Commerce. And Caitlin uh, was given a pride in Putnam Valley for this wonderful painting that was used to uh, be the actual, became the cover of the student planner this year. Hmm. And if you'll notice, there is an American Eagle, but if you look really, really closely, the eagle is made up of a collage of maps hmm. of all the villages and communities and towns that show what America is really about. Hmm. That it's this diversity of 
uh, an inclusion of so many people and their communities that bring us together. Uh, and so this American Eagle sort of brings us, shows the e pluribus unum of our nation. And uh, Caitlin also was part of MAGMA, our program for uh, students with disabilities. She's been uh, very active in sports, but she's, and she's going to be a chemical engineer studying at uh, I, uh, university um, where she will, you know, again, bring, you know, great rewards to our, to all of us. The work students doing. are just so talented. They are. They're well incredibly talented. talented. Yeah. Some of the class of uh, 2019 is going to be walking through the Putnam Valley Elementary School in a matter of moments. Fran and I are going to tail over there and check it out, and we'll be right back. Yes. You know, talk about an emotional experience. The walkthrough at the Putnam Valley Elementary School of the class of 2019 is simply amazing. Margaret Pedesco is with us, and Fran, yeah. you've been through an awful lot over the years, but as seasoned as you are, as veteran as you are, yeah. the tears just come down your <laughs> they cheeks. They do. They do, because this is really what it's about, you know? It's the teacher and the student and the feeling of, you know, completing and accomplishing, but also connecting back to where we came from. To those early days here. This is the wonderful thing about a community school. Mm -hmm. Students who've been here for 13 years, many of them, and what they've developed in terms of their emotional connections to people that can stay with them for the rest of their lives is something that gives them the resilience and strength. Margaret, you started this with friends four years ago? Yes, and with Sandy and Treary, the high school principal. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's it, just incredible. It is. You know, our teachers have eyes full of tears because we love these children and they remember teaching them when they were five and six years old. So for them to come back having achieved this high school graduation is so meaningful to us as a district all that's being offered to them and all their future ahead of them. It's just remarkable. Yes. And you know, the camaraderie of our staff and our administration just makes it all that much more poignant. Well, yeah. let's go back and take a look at the class of 2019 as they walk through the hallowed halls of Putnam Valley Elementary School. It was just six years ago that an article appeared in a local paper, and it said Dr. Fran Wills likes what she sees in Putnam Valley. You still like what you see? I love what I see, and uh, I love past, present, and future. Um, one of my mottos comes from uh, a poem by Emily Dickinson, and it's, I dwell in possibility. And that's sort of something I use as my mantra, uh, dwelling in possibility. What does that mean? It means that hope is always there, that uh, the future and the present are filled with doors to open, and we can't get stuck 
thinking that there is just one door. Because when one door closes, as we know, another opens. We've heard that expression, and it is true. Uh, and that is true of Putnam Valley. There are many doors now that are open. They have been, but more have been opened. More windows for students to see the world, to become part of something bigger than themselves, to realize that they can make a difference in the world. Yes, this is what I believe, and this is why I do what I do, and I have been doing. Uh, I want students to realize that there is a place for their voice to make a better world. What's the future? What are you going to be doing yourself? You're not going to sit I, still. No, I can't sit still. <laughs> but uh, I would like things to unfold. I do some teaching and I'd like to continue that. I teach doctoral students uh, who are involved in leadership positions. Um, and I mentor others. And I'd like to, um, to do some things again that I feel will make a difference because that's what life should be about, really. For me, that's what life is about. It's um, about a legacy uh, that we, we think about in, in our lives to make it meaningful. Um, not just a eulogy, <laughs> but a legacy, <laughs> as David Brooks said, who is a, a columnist for the New York Times, but uh, who I happen to read quite frequently and uh, think about because he's always talking about new books and new ideas. So. Yes, we all think about what is our legacy, and uh, we should be, even from when we're very young. Of course, when we're young, we don't really necessarily think in those terms. But um, every day, I believe we can make a difference in someone's life, and that's where real joy comes. Well, needless to say, we wish you the best. Thank you. And it's Thank been a you pleasure. So it's been a pleasure honor, working with you. Honor. These past six years, and we wish Fran, of course, the best, and we welcome Jeremy as well. For Superintendent of Schools, Fran Wills, I'm Eric Gross. We thank you so much for joining us for this year-end edition, the 2018-19 school year of Inside Putnam Valley Schools. Until next time, have yourselves a good summer.